Hello again, this is Natalie Armstrong Moton talking to Esther Carson Bluel about getting unstuck. And we have worked our way through to chapter eight in this beautiful book that Esther has written and um, has available on Amazon, as well as a complimentary workbook that you can download so that you can read the book and do some, some tasks and some self-awareness exercises as you're going through the book. So Esther, we're all the way to chapter eight. Tell me a little bit about chapter eight. Learning. Learning is an attitude. Learning yeah. is a way of living. And uh, it helps us move forward. And uh, it's a great thing. However, each of us has to learn our own lessons in our own time in our own way so you know a lot of stuff about a lot of things that i don't know <laughs> right and vice versa right this is true for everyone and um yeah it's hard especially if you're a parent <laughs> we want to infuse our children with lessons that we learn the hard way so that they don't have to suffer and all those things and of course it never works you can't just tell somebody how to do something or why it matters and all that kind of stuff and so part of being with other people is giving them the space and the grace and the opportunity and the environment to figure things out for themselves and this kind of goes back to the idea about you can't you're powerless to make other people learn what they need to know right you're powerless to have your child learn the same things you learned you know 30 years ago so um yeah we have to it's it's a process it, it's not an event and even if you're following through these videos about the book there are recurrent themes about being powerless and being important to yourself and letting go and forgiving and being kind and walking through things and all those kind of things and so one of the ways we learn is by paying attention and then being willing and curious about what it means to you what do you understand about this or that why does this or that why is that important to you and how does it apply to your life and because your life is you know back to the beginning about you right it's your responsibility it's your opportunity to be important to yourself but so if you're not really paying attention to what matters to you and what doesn't and how you're choosing to behave and all that the quality of life is not that rewarding right and in this chapter, I remember that you talk a little bit about um, rehearsing and do-overs. Mm -hmm. And that was a really interesting aspect for me in chapter eight. Explain a little bit about the, the do-over idea. This is one of my best tricks <laughs> because it's a way to uh it's almost like i've never called it this before but it's like speed learning so when you go back and focus on something that went wrong let's just say a conversation went badly or a situation went badly <clears throat> one of the things that really really helps us learn is to do it over so quickly the way you do that is you put yourself back in the experience in the moment imagine it in your mind's eye and actually you know most of the time you will feel whatever you felt you know ashamed or scared or mad or whatever it is and then using some of those skills so well that did not go well right what i what i was hoping would happen what i wanted to have happen was x right i wanted to be understood or whatever happened and to be specific about the outcome that you really needed or wanted okay and why it matters okay and then back up and say oh well all right well there was no way that was going to happen because the guy got mad and walked away oh okay so you needed him to not walk away okay so 
And what was going on for you? Oh, I was so scared that he would walk away, or I was so angry about this or that. And so you acknowledge where you are, what your own feeling is, and your own thought about it. And then the question is, okay, so is it more important to win right here and prove that you're right? Or is it more important for you to get a good result? So if it's important for you to win and make the other guy feel stupid, you'll do one thing. If it's more important to get a good result for yourself, you may do something different. So then you actually say to yourself, you know what? Okay, I really needed a good result. So what I wish I would have done or said or both is X. And then you must say it out loud. You can't just think it. You have to rehearse it because that requires you to actually do it, not just kind of think about it. Okay. What I wish I would have said is, you know, sir, I really uh, misunderstood whatever happened. And you say exactly what you wish you would have said. And then you imagine what might have happened. And then you learn. Okay. And, but you're taking responsibility for your own behavior. You're taking responsibility for your own outcome, your own experience, your own choice. And you can't, even if you do it right, let's say, let's say you do it better and it would have been better. There's no guarantee that you would have gotten a good result because maybe the person's an idiot. Okay. I don't know. But there's no guarantee about the other person, but at least you will be proud of yourself. You know what? I really handled that better and the guy was not willing. Or I wish I, I'm, you know, I feel better about myself or I'm more proud of myself that I behaved well or whatever. So that, that do over rehearsal uh, repair is a really, really, really powerful, fast way to learn about yourself. And, and the, the great thing is now that I've rehearsed it and I've done it differently, a funny thing happens in your body is that your brain gets tricked into kind of, because that's the last thing now that's on your brain instead of the thing you made a mess of. So it's almost like you did it over and you get to, you get to remember the, and experience the last thing that you said. And it doesn't erase it but it kind of covers it over a bit. And now your memory, that's the last thing that you remember is the way that you said it well. And so that is a, that's really one of my best tricks. And when I use that with clients and students and so forth, it makes all that, because remember, if you can do it once, you can do it twice. That's right. So if I do it effectively once, when I have time to stop and think about what I was doing and what I wanted to have happen and why it mattered, right? If I did that, then, oh, that's quite a process. Right. And now when I actually do it out loud, which is why you have to do it out loud, you have to say it out loud to the dog or whatever, it doesn't matter, in the shower, it doesn't matter. But when I actually do it, I have created an experience and my brain and my body know it. And it's now that's there for my reference and I can build on that success. Right, exactly. That, that's, that's one of my best tricks, one of my best, that really, really helps people learn, not just think about, right? There's a difference between knowing and knowing about, yeah, I should have said that differently, is 100% different then going back to the moment and kind of doing it over, rehearsing it. Sure. And is this, this idea of, um, of the, the do-over and the rehearsal, is it something that we always, that we always have to be a party to? Or is this something that we can learn by observing how other people manage situations? Can we pick up on the sure. ways in which they handle a customer service rep or the receptionist at a hotel to get an upgraded room or I, you know, whatever the situation might be. Is it something that we can observe and learn from other people or is this something that we actually have to have an experience in ourselves? Uh, that's a great question and I'm a big fan of learning from other people's experience. 
it works the best when you invest a bit of time and energy in reflecting and you know what oh no wonder that wasn't going to work or wow what a great idea i never thought about that so taking time to really pay attention to the situation and whatever happened and what learning there was so it's again having that learning attitude well like i, I wrote i write in the book about how i in the beginning when i had no clue about myself i would sit in the room with clients and i would hear their stories and some of them it's like oh my god like this is <laughs> But, right this train has left the station this is never and it's like okay i get it that doesn't work right and then i would say i'm not doing that or somebody would be really smart and clever and it's like wow that like oh oh that's good right and so i learned how to learn from people because i didn't learn at home and i didn't learn in you know third grade or whatever and so that's I really just mimicked people and learned from other people's lives a lot. So absolutely, that's a great, which is why I said when we were talking earlier about your nephew, right? He can listen to your story and go, oh yeah, good point. Well, huh, okay, right? I'll think about it. But it's, but that's, it's a choice to be accountable for your own behavior, your own lessons, your own reputation your own self-respect so i anything that helps people learn i'm in favor of but but so that observe and observing and uh rehearsal you can really get much wiser because you have different perspective because when you sit in a different chair in a room the room looks different you know if you're the boss if you're leading the meeting it's different than if you're in the meeting like all, all those things make a difference so when you're paying attention to you know who are you like what what is this about what does this mean to you what does this have to do with you why are you even doing this like when you're sort of paying attention to how you carry yourself and who you are as a person and what kind of a person you want to be in a relationship or society or whatever you're conscious of that it's and i like the idea that um it allows that idea again of being gentle with yourself forgiving yourself um, allowing yourself to make that mistake and and then you give us this technique of the do-over um, mm -hmm. so that we don't repeat that same mistake right we, we can find ourselves in a similar situation and and make a totally different mistake but learn from now those two mistakes and rewire it so that we can theoretically on try number three get it spot on and, and stop with the the mistake making part of it for a bit so that's uh that's a good way to say it it, it is almost like rewiring right it's really acknowledging that that this is different and it can be and you know there's a whole social psychology thing of positive psychology and the idea about a negative perspective and a and an optimistic perspective so for instance if you um you know made a mistake okay and made a mess of something you can either say whoa never want to do that again what happened i gotta look at that or oh my god and then berate yourself and humiliate yourself and so forth and then the question is how is that helpful okay what do you want to have happen now okay you now have humiliated yourself or yelled at yourself for you know 15 minutes so now what like now what how is that helpful and therefore what so that you know willingness to be present and accountable is kind of a big deal and this idea of um of of learning and being better in situations being better in relationships being better in behavior is there a, a proactive end to this so for example um 
if I know that I'm going to have a, a challenging experience that for me historically has been challenging, is there a benefit in me, for example, going to my husband saying, historically, this has been really challenging for me. Can you help me devise a, a better path? Can you help me create a better script? Can you help me create a better strategy so that it's not really a do over, but it's sort mm -hmm. of a do in advance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is, is there benefit in that? Absolutely. That's kind of falls under the heading of managing expectations mm -hmm. and start with the end in mind. Like, okay, so what is it that you really want to have happen in this situation or this experience or whatever? Like, what, what's it going to look like when it's good? or great or whatever you have in mind like what's it going to look like when you are proud of yourself okay and then be specific and why does it matter and so forth and so starting with the end in mind staying focused on what you're doing and why it matters then when you know where you're going and why it's important then you can say okay so i get that i need you know this attitude or this skill or whatever but i don't exactly know how to do that thing now you can say to your husband help me understand a better way to say that or what would be a better way to do that or i don't have that skill or what do you think about that but doing how before you know what is a mistake Right. If you're not focused on the end and what it's going to be like for you when you're proud of yourself and you're talking about, so tell me how to do this piece. You're going to get sidetracked. And that is a big mistake that all of us make. Exactly. Thank okay. you for that question. Uh, I like that chapter a lot. I like it. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, that's it for this chapter. Esther, thank you for your time. On the next video, we are moving on to chapter nine. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Esther.